Hello, my name is Alessandro, and I live in Puerto Rico. I am the moderator of r slash Jehovah's Witnesses since the beginning. I just wanted to share how I was a Jehovah's Witness, how I became one of Jehovah's Witnesses, how I got out, and what, uh, what the whole purpose of me doing this YouTube channel is for. So everybody's already heard how people, I mean, it's to, to be honest, like there really isn't uh, any amazing story about how someone got out of it's like, yeah, everyone, you might feel what you need when it finally happens to you, but after you've met like a million ex says nobody cares. So my story isn't anything special. Um, but it was not a Jehovah's Witness. I was 16 years old and I always wanted to learn about God and the Bible. And the only Bibles around me were the, uh, the King James Version, which has very archaic English. You know, the thou speakest thy hither and thither. Who? Nobody understands that English in modern day. So like as a 10 year old trying to read that, I was, it just went right over my head. And so I quit reading the Bible because every time I got my hands on one, it was King James. And I didn't know anything about different Bible versions. Nobody in my family cared about God. So, um, one of my cousins is a Joe's went still, he's uh, one of the anointed. And, um, he started taking my brother and I to the Kingdom Hall. Um, after a few months, I decided that I was going to go full in. Because they told me that their Bible was the only one that was correct. That was the only Bible that I could understand because I didn't know anything of other Bibles. So my only... Um, my only knowledge of God was through the New World Translation. And so since Jehovah's Witnesses wrote it, they also gave me a lot of false interpretation of biblical scriptures. And through the course of like a year, I was indoctrinated. As you, most of you would know how that uh, process goes. So what happened next, um, yeah, I got baptized eventually, and I went eight years from 2008 to 2016. I was a J Dub. Now, my life started falling apart, and I got very depressed. I lost my job, lost my house. Well, not my house, my apartment. And, uh, Ended up sleeping on my uncle's couch. So I came to Puerto Rico, right? <clears throat> Didn't have a job. Couldn't really speak Spanish that well. And that was, just became a recluse. And uh, on, the fl on the flight from, on one of the flights from, uh, Orlando to San Juan. See, I grew up in Orlando. Uh, my, uh, first of all, let me just point out, put out there that my family is a Jet family. We only fly Jet Blue. For some reason, the VA this time decided to uh, give my grandfather uh, Southwest tickets with the airline Southwest, uh, if you don't know, because they normally give him Jet Blue tickets. And then when we book private flights, it's always Jet Blue. And I don't, <laughs> off topic, I don't recommend Fly Spirit at the Frontier. They're horrible. Anyways, uh, so this one time we get Southwest, and this is the only time I've ever flown Southwest. So we're sat in the front because my grandfather's in a wheelchair, and a flight attendant that works there 
a super nice guy keeps talking to me and my grandfather for some reason. I just can't figure out why, why is he interested us? There are tons of hot chicks on this plane that he could be talking to. Why is he talking to me? Right. And so like, I was a little bit annoyed at first, but the more I got to know him, like he was a bro, you know, fo football, et cetera, whatever. We talked about sports and we talked like for 30 minutes and he would leave, he would leave and say that he had to go take care of business. Right. Cause obviously he's at work and, and, you know, like 40 minutes would pass. And I guess, you know, I, I would like kind of get sad. I guess he, he wasn't coming back and he did come back eventually. And then he continued speaking with my grandfather and I, and, uh, anyways, after that flight, when I got to Puerto Rico, I mean, I'm going to tell you why this flight attendant is super important. I got to Puerto Rico and just had the idea. Let me, you know, like, it's like they caught the watchtower is constantly talking about don't ever research us on the internet because it's full of apostate lies. And, uh, I was like already thinking like I'm already inactive like I'm gonna get this straight out of Armageddon so I didn't care like let me just Google Jehovah's Witness I mean I, let me search up Jehovah's Witnesses on Reddit so let me see if there's a subreddit so I found myself browsing r slash xjw and that's how the process of me waking up began back in those days in 2016 r slash xjw was more of the way that r slash Jehovah's Witnesses is today. There wasn't a lot of uh, personal stuff going on, like a lot of crying and like, just like very personal things. It was more about people uh, pointing out doctrinal contradictions and think what's wrong with the watchtower and exposing them. So, so I basically became a research journalist and I spent hours and days and months going through archive.org, through uh, the other JW forum, I forgot what it's called, searching through like uh, hundreds of posts on r slash XJW. I found myself on uh, another apostate on YouTube on his website. I'm not going to name it because he is actually, his, his teachings are pretty dangerous and heretical. And I don't want people to be stumbled. So I will give you his name. And I, I found, uh, so I spent like six months uh, deep deprogramming myself from all the teachings. And uh, finally, I decided to move to Miami to work there. And that's when I got born again. I was watching YouTube one day and this guy by the name of Dean Braxton, who died for an hour and 45 minutes and has a death certificate to prove it. He died and he went to heaven. And the two hours that he was gone down here, he spent two weeks up there because time is relative, right? And, um, one thing that really like got my attention was the fact that he said the father's name was Jehovah and he's a Trinitarian and he's saying that Jesus is God and there's a hell he saw, he saw it, but the father, and I'm like, like that kind of blew me away because I was in the mode where I've had, you know, you're, there's a lot of teachings out here by the XJW community that Jehovah is a Freemasonic God. And, uh, that's a bunch of crap. That's not true. Uh, the, the Masons use that name just because the Masons believe that whoever they are praying to is called Jehovah doesn't mean that it's true. And just because the Watchtower Society is what it was and is involved in Mason doesn't mean that that teaching is true. The Father's name is Jehovah. And, and many other things that Dean Braxton saw up, there, saw up there that he answered were things that I had always wondered about as a Jehovah's Witness questions like that, that, that I had inside of me 
that he answered. And um, there were, you have to watch his video. I'm going to link it in the description because everybody has to watch that video. And um, I believed him. I believed him. He's not lying. You can't make up. You can't make up some of the things that he saw up there. He doesn't even have words to describe what he saw in heaven. There are words on, on earth that do not exist. And that's why it's impossible to describe what he saw up there. And he also saw colors that don't exist in our, on our, in our universe in heaven. He said colors are being, new colors are being created every day. Think about that. A new color that you've never seen. So, I mean, <clears throat> that's our God. He is not, you cannot put him in a box. So, um, so that's how I became born again that day. Anyways, um, about in the year 2022, my brother was also a Jehovah's Witness, and I prayed for him like 500 times to get out of there and get born again. And he went to a Kevin Zadai conference in Orlando, Florida, a spirit school there. And that's how he left the Jehovah's Witnesses. He got born again at a Warrior Notes uh, event. And it just so happens that that guy that got my brother born again, Kevin Zadai, was the flight attendant on that Southwest, Southwest flight from Orlando to Puerto Rico. And he prayed me in. Because when I think about it, when I, when I got home after that, that's when all of this started unraveling. He prayed me into the kingdom. Kevin Zayda, I met him on that flight and he prayed me into the kingdom. And I got, then I finally got born again through Dean Braxton's testimony. <clears throat> so that's how spiritually where I'm at now, right? So you understand my background. So let's talk about Reddit. Um, I felt that the amount of research and work that I had to do to uh, uncover this lie was insane. And nobody should go through that type of uh, work just to uncover that they're being lied to. Like the Watchtower is very good at hiding your doctrine. You're not going to find a statement of faith or beliefs on their website. They do that on purpose because they know that most people, if they get hit with all their crap at once, will deny it. And so they full spoon feed you their doctrine very slowly so that you're indoctrinated. By the time you, you, you don't even know you're getting uh, brainwashed by them. But six months have passed and they've given you their bull crap in little pieces so it's easier for you to accept. And, that, and they know that. That's why they do that. That's why it's so, it was so hard for me to like figure it all out, right? And that's why I have the wiki set up on Reddit. And uh, so as far as the YouTube channel goes, it wasn't my idea. I'm not, I don't consider myself uh, like, a, honestly, I believe I am unqualified, but the Lord told me to start this YouTube channel and a website. And uh, so I'm just going to do it, see what happens. Um, And if you have a problem with that, you don't believe me. I mean, if you think that I'm like crazy because I said God told me to do it. Well, you can simply like leave my YouTube channel. Leave, like, I don't need to hear about it. You don't need to go in the comment section and uh, share your opinion. I don't care. <clears throat> Save the digital link, please. Now, okay. So uh, the story of the rocket on the cross for the logo of this. My friend Viviana, uh, she had a something personal was going on in my life for two years. She, anyways, she had a. It's related to that, but she had a vision of a rocket blasting off, and um, the uh, rocket. She said that the Lord told her it represented me. And that I was about to go fast in the spirit with no wasted time. Right. This is a, a private prophecy that I received. 
but I would like to impart that onto anybody watching this and bless you with that too. Because you're going to, you're watching this, you are an ex Jehovah's Witness or you're about to become one. And you are going to be like a rocket who's about to take off with no waste of time in the spirit. And all the lost years that you have, all the years that you have lost as, as a Jehovah's Witness will be regained. So the rocket represents you in Christ. That's why there's a rocket in the cross. As far as the name goes, Fire Team Omega. Uh, so I was praying. I waited seven days for the Lord to uh, help me figure it out. Uh, I don't want this to be a ministry about me. It's about people. We're in the last days. The word Omega means last in degree. We're supposed to be warriors for God, Christ, Christian spiritual warriors. And we're not victims, we're soldiers. Okay. So a fire team is used in the military. They're, they're a squad of gunners. That's why it's called fire team. And for the last days. So we're like a last days squad of spiritual warriors. So fire team will make. <clears throat> Obviously seven means perfection. It's like what it represents for God. Um, and my uncle recommended I do a podcast format for this. So I think it's a good idea. We don't need any more preachy YouTube video channels. Everybody does that. So maybe someday I'll have people on. Who knows where it's going to go. We'll just see what happens. So this video is just an introduction to uh, Fireteam Omega. That's basically it. And then uh, remember that Jesus Christ loves you and God bless you. Have a great day.